Hi, and welcome to the Vuma Network Basics training video. After downloading, installing, and registering your free copy of Vuma, it is now time to jump into using the program. Let's start by opening the Massive Mine example and going through the basics of navigating your way around a Vuma model. Navigation Basics To zoom in or out, position the mouse cursor where you want to zoom and scroll the mouse wheel up or down. You can also make use of the numpad plus or minus to quickly zoom in or out. To pan or move around in the model, keep the mouse scroll wheel pressed in and then move the mouse. To rotate the view, keep the right mouse button pressed in, preferably while the mouse is hovering on a branch or a node. To have the entire model fit onto the screen, click on the Zoom Fit button on top. If you want to go to a specific branch, you can use the Find option from the context menu to locate the branch or node. Taking the effort to appropriately name branches will greatly enhance the overall experience. Display Settings to toggle the visibility of a Vuma network element, use the relevant page on the right hand of the screen. Simply check or uncheck the item in question. This applies to reference drawings, layers, levels, and branches of a certain air type. In addition to this panel, certain items can be toggled using the checkboxes on the display tab. These include billboards, 3D icons, sticky text, and many more. The bottom bar allows for even more display options, like changing of the colors and text, as well as showing or hiding of elements such as nodes and directional arrows. To change the colors to, for example, node wet bulbs, click on the branch icon on the bottom left. Switch to node mode. Now select wet bulb from the pop-up menu. Notice the change in colors. To switch to a branch color, for instance mass flow, once again click on the bottom left button and choose branch. Now select mass flow from the list. To display text labels, first ensure that the text toggle button is checked. Next, choose the relevant type, node or branch of the text property to display. Lastly, choose the relevant property. Text size and viewing distance can be altered using the display screen which will be described in more detail at a later stage. To construct or draw a new branch, select the required type from the Home Draw group and left-click on the canvas to start drawing. To end the construction, left-click once more. Notice that the length of the drawn branch will be shown whilst the branch is being created. Repeat the action if required or press Escape to exit the construction mode. To edit a branch, double-click on the branch. Alternatively, you can edit it via the right-click context menu, or hovering over it and pressing E on the keyboard. Branch Types Vuma uses six different branch types to simplify and group the inputs. The first branch type is a tunnel, which will make up most of your network. Tunnels, like most of the other branch types except for fans and controls, have three major input sections. Aero, Thermo and Contaminants. Click on the relevant page to view or edit it. It is advisable to give each branch a descriptive name. You should also specify the air type, whether it is intake or fresh air, dedicated return air, RAW, or service return air. The service return air type indicates that the air has already passed through a workplace but will be reused downstream. If the branch is directly connected to surface, like a vent shaft, or at the start of a decline, you must tick the connected to start node checkbox. You can add subdata to the branch on the thermo tab by selecting the type and making it active. Subdata types include user-defined heat loads, such as heat from pipes, lights, and substations, or from vehicles or other water sources. On the contaminant side, you can add continuous spot sources of dust or gas, to track for instance the dust produced at a crusher. Contaminant concentrations are calculated at outlet nodes based on contaminant load and branch ventilation flow rates. Gases are assumed to be ideal and inert. Let us move on to shafts. 
Shafts are vertical branches, typically connecting the surface and the various underground levels. After selecting the shaft branch, you can start constructing the vertical branch. Editing of the shaft works in similar fashion, by either double-clicking the shaft, or hovering over it and pressing E. Note that, unlike tunnels, you cannot directly edit a shaft length, as it is determined by its drawn length. Shafts features a shaft shock calculator, which is useful in determining additional shock losses. Shafts have similar thermo and contaminants pages as the tunnel branch type. Shafts can also be added to a network by right-clicking on a node and selecting the option Insert a Vertical Branch. On the next screen, select the levels on which the shaft will hold and click on OK. The shaft branch will be added to the screen. Development headings are branches that simulate the excavation of tunnels in virgin ground for exploration or for the establishment of new production zones. Development ends are constructed in the same manner as tunnels, by first selecting the type from the home draw group. VUMA offers a selection of options reflecting mining of different minerals and ores, and in varying degrees of mechanization within these. Development ends are typically ventilated using a ducting system, with air either being forced or exhausted past the face area through said ducts. Additional heating and cooling loads can be configured on the thermo tab. Next up, we will look at fan branches. Fans are network components used to move air in simulated networks. The type of fans most modeled using VUMA network are either axial flow or centrifugal fans and are used to move air inside the mine's underground tunnels, typically auxiliary or booster fans, or at the top of ventilation shafts, for instance main upcast fans. Before a fan can be used in a ventilation network it must be defined in the fan library, which will be covered later. Fans are drawn in a similar fashion as tunnels or development headings. If you hover over a fan branch, the fan curve will be displayed in the hints panel. Total pressure curves are plotted in red, and static pressure curves are in blue. The blue dot indicates the fan operating point. Surface fans will typically have the connected to start node checkbox ticked. If you do not possess the fan curve, or want to make some quick edits, you can also employ the fixed flow control manager type, which we will discuss next. Control managers are network components that have primary aerodynamic, thermal, or contaminant properties that are specific and can be controlled by users. Control manager elements include various aerodynamic types, such as leakage paths, regulators, bends and air crossings, as well as thermal types, such as coolers or heaters. Contaminant sources and sinks are also catered for, the latter represented by filters and scrubbers. Some control managers allow the user to change the 3D icon. Note that changing the icon does not affect the underlying calculations. Lastly, you can set the leakage or commitment checkbox alongside its expected or designed flow rate. Setting these will allow you to interrogate the overall utilization of air using the relevant dashboard. Finally, production zones, or stopes, are branches that represent areas of an underground mine, where the ore is produced, or minerals are extracted. VUMA Network allows for a wide range of mining methodologies including narrow reef, massive ore bodies, and colliery layouts with different levels of mechanization and backfill. Users can build customized stoping and production gallery layouts through selections from eight basic production zone types. Select the relevant mining type before editing the arrow or thermo inputs. Changing the dimensions of the excavation will update the tonnage label automatically. Thermal attributes, such as the establishment period, Face advance rate and other subdata can be added on the thermo tab. During solving, VUMA will calculate both the face condition and the reject condition. Note that the display size of stope branches can be toggled using the display realistic stope checkbox.
Vuma uses levels to group branches of a similar depth. To create or edit levels, go to the level editor on the level page. On this screen, you can add, edit, or delete levels. Once a level has been created, you can draw on that level or show and hide branches based on their respective level. You can also color branches according to said level. Levels are assigned automatically based upon the node's depth. An easy way to add new levels is to right-click on an existing node and select the Add New Level option. You can also create levels automatically by using the tool's model depth function. Here, you can set a minimum interval depth between levels as well as a starting depth. Click on OK to have the function recreate new levels. Levels are also used to determine the orbit point when rotating, so it is recommended to add new levels when deepening a model to keep the rotation smooth. Another very useful grouping method for displaying and editing purposes is layers. Unlike levels, which is assigned automatically, layers are user-defined and assigned individually. There are two distinct layers, namely layer 1 and layer 2. These two layers work collectively to determine the visibility of each branch. For a branch to be visible, it only needs to be active on either the layer 1 or layer 2 property. To hide it, the branch layer must be unchecked on both layer properties. To modify the layer collection, go to the layer editor in the layer page. Type in a new name and click on the Add New Layer button. To edit an existing layer, right-click to show the context menu, and then choose the relevant option. To quickly remove all layers with no branches assigned to it, click on the Delete and Used button. After setting up the layers, click on the OK button to close the form. Like levels, branches can be colored based on their Layer 1 or Layer 2 property. You can also choose to highlight a specific layer. To assign layers to a branch, you can either edit it via the branch editor and choosing the required layers from the respective drop-down, or by selecting a group of branches and editing it via the right-click context menu. To save time and avoid editing of the same values repeatedly, it is recommended that you set a branch default prior to constructing. To set a default, click on the Library Defaults button, and then choose the branch type to configure. For this example, we will select the Fan option. Once the Fan form has opened, choose the default library fan that will be used most often. You can also configure the default layer and air type. Click on OK to close the form. When a new fan branch is drawn, it will have the properties of the default fan. Note that, changing defaults will not affect or modify any existing branch, but will only be applied to branches created thereafter. You can also set a default by first editing a branch, and then clicking on the Set as New Default button. Next up, we will have a look at some of the construction tools available in Vuma. These will all be found on the Home tab, inside the construction group. Before we start, let's reopen the Example 2 model first. The first tool is the Delete tool. Activate the tool by clicking on the eraser icon. Clicking on any branch will delete it. Note that nodes cannot be deleted but will disappear automatically if they are no longer attached to any branch. To exit the delete mode, press the escape button or click on the select icon. Below the eraser is a magnet. The magnet mode lets you quickly connect branches. The first selected branch will stay in place, but the second selected branch's closest node, relative to where you clicked on the first branch, will join to the node closest to where you clicked on the first branch. The opposite of the magnet tool is the disconnect tool. To disconnect, right-click on the branch where you want to disconnect, and from the context menu, choose the disconnect option. 
a new node will appear where the mouse cursor was positioned. To the right of the Delete tool sits the Format Painter tool. This tool copies specific or all properties between branches. To use it, first select the Format button then click on the branch from which you wish to copy, also known as the Source branch. You can customize which properties to copy. You can also toggle the Color Assist mode on or off. If you do not wish to show the screen every time, you can uncheck this option. To show it again, go to Display Configure. All branches clicked on whilst the Format mode is still active will now inherit the values from the first selected branch. To exit the Format Painter mode, press the Escape button or click on the select icon. Below the Format Painter sits the Branch Picker icon. This tool allows you to individually add or remove branches from the multi-selection set. This is very useful in cases where the rectangular or fence selection is not adequate or you want to fine-tune the selection. To exit the Picker mode, Press the Escape button, or click on the Select icon. To also clear the entire selection, press the Escape key again. You can also add individual branches to a selection by keeping the Shift key pressed in, without entering the Picker mode. Next to the Format Painter sits the Merge Mode icon. This tool allows the user to quickly merge two connected branches into a single branch. Note that the properties of the first selected branch will stay intact, whilst the second branch will be replaced. Nothing will happen if you try and merge two branches without a shared node. Below the merge mode is the Add Duct tool. This tool allows you to add a duct to a branch by simply clicking on said branches. After clicking on the duct icon, configure the duct with regards to its name, size, layers, friction, etc. Now simply click on the branches where you wish to add a new duct. Ducts can be shown or hidden using the air types page on the right hand side. You can also use the screen to show or hide other specific air types such as intake or return air branches. Next to the Merge tool is the Insert Default Control Manager tool. This tool is very useful in quickly adding a control manager to an existing branch without disconnecting and rejoining nodes again. Simply define the default control manager whether it be a ventilation door or some other type of regulator and click on a branch to insert it. Lastly, you can format paint the angle or direction and length of branches, very useful in board and pillar type layouts. Click on the icon to activate the mode and then set the source branch. Any branch that you select while this mode is active will update to reflect the source branch direction and length. Other useful construction tools can be found on the right-click context menu. Here you can for instance change a branch type to another type. You can also change the flow direction of a branch. This is particularly important in the case of a fan or a fixed flow. Reverse flows will be indicated by showing both the volume and the mass flow as a negative value. To set all the branches flow direction according to the last solve, use the Fix Reverse Flows option on the Solve menu. Choose which branch types should be included, and then click on OK. Remember to resolve the model afterwards. The Segment option allows you to split a branch into shorter sections either by a predefined length or for a more advanced option, by its age. Once you click on OK, the branch will be segmented. The Select Similar option is a powerful tool, allowing you to quickly select a group of branches by their matching properties. 
You can select one or more properties to fine-tune the selection. As you check or uncheck options, the selected branch count will update. Note that some options are only relevant to certain branch types, such as library fans or production status. The split branch option is also very useful in breaking up longer sections of tunnels. Note that the splitting of branches will duplicate the subdata, so if for instance you had a vehicle in the original branch, you will now have two of the same vehicle after the split event. It is often easier to use the shortcut to better position the split. In this case, the shortcut is the letter S. Time to move on to the reporter. The Vuma Reporter is a powerful mass editor and viewer and is divided into three main sections. The first section is related to all the inputs of the model. These inputs can easily be sorted or filtered using the column headers. You can also customize which columns to view. Note the quick stats on the bottom status bar. The second section contains all the branch outputs and the last section covers several summaries. The reporter allows you to quickly edit basically any branch input. To do this, select the property that you wish to edit and then right-click. Provided that you are in an editable input cell, you will be presented with an editor screen. The type of screen will differ depending on the input required. Double-clicking on a branch will zoom to that branch in the model screen. You can also limit the reporter's dataset by first multi-selecting some branches and then launching the reporter. When the prompt pops up, answer yes. This can be very useful for drill-down reporting or editing. Once inside the reporter, you can toggle whether you wish to include all the excluded branches in the report. Data from the reporter can be exported to other programs, such as Excel, either by a simple copy and paste, or via the CSV export option. You can also perform a solve from inside the reporter. Speaking of solving, let's have a quick look at the warnings or errors you might receive after solving. We will start by going to the Solve tab, and then to its dashboard. Here, you can view all the potential branch, node, or global errors. You can click on a row to jump to that branch in the model. Solver errors will result in the solution process being halted, and thus the resulting answers are not the final answer. This will be indicated by the red cross on top. Solver errors include, amongst other, unrealistically high temperatures, normally due to a heat source in a branch with very low airflow, or errors relating to extreme pressure drops, perhaps due to a high quantity of air being forced through a restriction without any alternative path, or lastly, global errors, whereby a model could not converge, typically because of a badly ventilated model. There are also warnings in VUMA, which does not halt the solution, but will prompt you to investigate potential issues. These warnings can be customized using the Customize Warnings button inside the Solver dashboard. Here, you can show or hide warnings, and for some, edit its tolerance. After solving, warnings will briefly appear in the notification section on the bottom right. Branches or nodes with errors and warnings will have a blinking effect. To suppress this effect, you can opt to stop the highlighting of errors by unchecking the option on the Solve tab. Here, you can also reset all node values back to the global default values, which is useful if you are struggling to perform for instance an error solution with nodes having high temperatures. You can also uncheck the Unconnected Warning checkbox to not have Vuma prompt you about unconnected branches prior to solving.
Another useful feature is the option to check for recirculation in your model. Recirculation, unless intentionally designed, can result in worsening conditions, such as higher temperatures, or an increase in blast fume clearance times. Secondary meshes can be defined as a subset of connected branches that contains no path to the start node, and as such need to be either properly connected or excluded prior to a solve being performed. The loops button is useful in indicating small, connected little circuits, normally the result of a solid reference drawing that was converted and can typically be optimized by deleting or merging branches. In addition to the normal solver, VUMA also contains several calculators for specific applications. Let us have a quick look at them by switching to the Calculators tab. First on the list is the Psychrometric Calculator. Select a combination of input values and then click on Solve to determine the air or psychrometric properties. The results can be copied to the clipboard. Next up is the air cooler calculator, which is useful in designing a bulk air cooler. Enter the air and liquid side parameters, and then specify a cooler type. Click on Solve to show the results on both the graph and the associated data table. The air cooling power calculator provides information regarding the air cooling power and its limiting skin temperature based on the worker's working condition and clothing rating. This calculator can be used for both acclimatized and unacclimatized workers. The mixing calculator is a handy tool to help with determining the condition of a mixed airstream, i.e. where multiple airstreams joined. You can have up to four streams mixing. You can also perform a backtrack solution where you know the condition of the mixed stream, but wishes to calculate the properties of an unknown input stream. The conveyor calculator uses simplified inputs with a rule of thumb approach to calculate a heating value from both the motors of a conveyor and optionally, the heat from the broken rock as transported by the belt. The calculated heat can be carried across to VUMA as an equivalent dry linear user heat. Our final topic relates to the importing and converting of mine plans, also known as reference drawings. These are produced by several third-party software vendors, including but not limited to AutoCAD, MicroStation, Deswick, Vulkan, and MapTech. To import one of these formats, click on the relevant import option under the References tab, and then follow the prompts further. As a demonstration, let us do one example together. Open a new blank model, then click on the reference AutoCAD button. You will be prompted to choose whether you wish to see a preview first, which in turn allows for basic editing of the drawing before importing it into VUMA. Choose yes, and then browse to the example folder located inside the VUMA installation path, typically on the C drive inside the program files folder. Once there, load the AutoCAD example and click on OK. With the model loaded, you can now remove layers from the drawing, or even delete blocks by first fencing them and then pressing the delete key on the keyboard. You can also quickly remove items with a similar property, like a shared type or layer, by right-clicking on one, and then using the Select Similar option. Once you are done with the cleanup, click on the export button to return the model to VUMA. After the drawing appears in VUMA, you will probably want to convert the drawing into equivalent branches. To do this, click on this convert button and set your preferences. Click on OK to continue. Depending on the source drawing, especially if it was not a center line, you might have to do some further cleanup post-conversion. To speed up the process, have a look at the Mine Plan Optimization Tools underneath the Tools tab. This concludes the 30-minute basic training video for VOMA Network.
If you wish for us to create a new video on a specific topic, please leave a comment below, or drop us a mail at info at vuma3d.com. Happy modeling!